Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the show. As you know, it's always about inspirational people helping us to be better people. This week is no exception. I am here with one of my idols. I feel like a little schoolboy, let me tell you. The lovely, the wonderful Reiki Ayola. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. I know you're a busy girl, so we're very lucky to have you. Thank you for us. You've got it all going on. And here we are in the Kiln Theatre where you're Kiln, rehearsing. Yes, we're in the cinema of the Kiln Theatre. And we're rehearsing upstairs in the rehearsal room for a show that will be on in the theatre. And what's the name of the show? The Half God of Rainfall. Right. by Inua Ellums. Right. Who wrote uh, the wonderful Barbershop Chronicles. Okay. He's an amazing poet, playwright, all round. All rounder, yeah. Man. So it opens when? I knew you'd ask me that. <coughs> <laughs> Naturally. Uh, Not quite sure. <laughs> cut that bit. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Those are the bits that have to stay in. <laughs> do, I, do you know, I've got so many dates in my head. Right. And I can't remember which one's the right one. That's so awful. But I think you were saying earlier that it opens in Birmingham. It opens at Birmingham Rep. Right. Uh, and we play there for a week or so, and then it comes back here. I know that it finishes. <laughs> yeah. Because we'd love to have everyone come down and see it, of course. It's here for, yes, it's here, it's here throughout April, at least. Okay. So, yeah, well, that's a good starting and, and point. And side <laughs> of April. Okay, that's a good starting <laughs> point. <laughs> Okay, did you get that, guys? April. So just turn up any time in April so and you'll catch ridiculous. it. I don't know. I, you just wind me up and I go wherever they tell me. Yeah, but you're so busy. How are you keeping it all going? It's like I don't know. how I'm, I'm very, very, very grateful to be so busy. But how, how I, well, I, I do get wound up. Because you've just come back from South Africa. Yes, I was doing uh, the six-part adaptation of Noughts and Crosses there. So I was back and forth. And before that, I was doing Leave to Remain at the Lyric Hammersmith. So I was sort of doing a bit of Noughts and Crosses and then Leave to Remain and a bit more of Noughts and Crosses and then came back here, um, which, is, which is a wonderful position to be in. Yeah, because you all want to be working as much as you can. Stream, uh, but sometimes I'm... I, I don't know whether I'm... Going and I mean, with lucky. three things going on at once, you're very lucky not to be saying the lines from one in the other. Well, yeah, <laughs> that might just happen, let me tell you. That might Never. <laughs> now, you first came into my realm in Holby City. Oh, Holby. And I can remember watching you, watching the character, and then there was one point where... It was like everything was crumbling. The world, your yes. world was crumbling. And there was just yes. this look on your face. And I thought, I've got to come back to this next week. <laughs> and that's where I was then hooked. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, there was a, a lot going on. And yeah. there, there always is for those characters. in. The, yeah, in the but I mean, you were actually like a crazy woman. I can remember you locking yourself in one of the offices in the hospital <gasps> with the blinds behind. I can remember yes. it vividly, blinds behind, and you just like, I think, um, oh yeah, there was some craziness. Yes, craziness is a thing. I've just um, th done a series of Shetland that's just aired on BBC One. And that, that's was, right, yeah. There, was, there were issues there. Too. You're a BBC gem, aren't you? Because Well, I don't know that anyone at the BBC would say that. Oh, you are. I just, I just because I what you went to do in South Africa was for the BBC yes. as well, wasn't it? But it's such a big organisation. I don't know if anyone actually knows. I wonder if there is a person that knows that you are such a that, gem. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> see, I, I don't think I'm one of those. Get her. We want her. I don't think I'm one of those people. I think I you think are. It's more, oh, you got her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is it too late? <laughs> <laughs> Can we get someone else? Yeah. Then? No, I, I don't think like so. <laughs> no, I think you've got it down pat. So let's go back to you growing up in Wales because I can still hear a little. Little yes. bit of a Welsh accent there. I am a Cardiff girl. I'm a Cardiff girl. Yeah. Um, born in London. Right. And taken to Cardiff when I was taken because I was I was this big, so you know. I yeah. no As baby time. I was taken <laughs> to Cardiff uh, when <coughs> I was just a couple of months old. So so I was uh, in my. I don't know. I was like eleven or twelve before I knew I wasn't born in Cardiff. Really. I just oh really? I was born. 
in St. David's Hospital, I called my friends and I was really disappointed. I was really disappointed that I wasn't um, born in Cardiff because that's all I'd known. Right. Um, so, so although I live in London now and London is, is home, that's where my home is, my family are, I'm very much a product of the Cardiff council estate that I grew up on and, and I face the world and my sensibilities are all... Uh, are all born from that. From that. Yeah. All your strengths and everything are from yeah. that. That's the foundation. More than anything else. Right. Yeah. And your parents are Nigerian? So my father was Nigerian. Right. My mother was from Sierra Leone. Right. Uh, they died both at, at different times, um, but they're both dead. My, and I was raised by my mother's Sierra Leonean cousin and his wife. The, they are who took you to, yes. to Wales. and they also are dead. So my Cardiff mum, who wasn't my biological mother, but died when I was 14. So she was the first. So I've sort of had two sets of parents. They're all dead. How lucky are you? To have two sets. That's the first bit, to have two sets. Well, We're beginning to think she kills <laughs> parents. <laughs> my, uh, my biological parents had nothing at all to do with my upbringing so okay. uh, n nothing at all right um so it was like an adoption except it wasn't right legal it was well in those no days it was like yeah this is my sister's <laughs> child this is my cousin's this child kid. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So it was that um and it was in ely in cardiff which uh was a massive council estate you know one of those i think there were several council estates in the country that claimed the biggest in Europe title. It was one of those. Oh, OK, right. Yeah, I yeah. don't know which of them actually was <laughs> up and down the UK. Um, I imagine a lot of those houses. And imagine that's the claim to fame. It's the biggest council estate in Europe. Yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. exactly. That was it. That's all we got. That's all we got. We're the biggest council estate in Cardiff. And, uh, and it, was, it had a, a reputation, as a lot of those estates did, because they were built in the, what, in the 60s. Yeah. And you know those, those estates that um, so you've got your houses, whether they're terraced or whether they're semis. And we had a two-bed semi with a massive garden at the front and a massive garden at the back. Right, yeah. Which I was told was so people would grow vegetables. But nobody grew vegetables. Like a handful of people. There was they one just put on junk on it. Exactly. <laughs> it was more one business. or two houses on your street where somebody grew vegetables. and The rest and of the front gardens were filled with junk. junk. Yeah. Like, uh, this is where I do up my car. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, this, uh, like made up of lots of other Garages, yeah. Still, yeah. the council come and take it. And this is, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so we had loads of space front and and back. And my, my dad, to be fair, did at least mow the lawn. We didn't have a lawn full of, okay. full of junk. But, and in fact, our street was, was quite nice. But there was, when I think of it now, so the, the gardens were huge. Yeah. And of course, they don't do no, that anymore. So if they're building social houses, social houses. You'd be lucky if you have any outside exactly, space at all. Exactly. I'm really <coughs> aware of that. Yeah. So whenever I go back, I go, they could have built, they could have built hundreds more houses. Houses. I'm glad they didn't, because we had a lot. Well, yeah, but you know, play, it was the attitude and the mentality. You know, it was still in the space where you're thinking of people having space to live in, yes. rather than it being a space for a developer to make money. Absolutely. So and land was important then. This is your land. You might yeah. be renting it from the council, but this is your land. Whereas now, when you think that the land's not what what's important, it's the postcode that's important. The, yeah. So I will have a tiny place in a in really an expensive, expensive postcode. You step in the front door, yeah. hit your head on the kitchen cupboard. Exactly. As you and step there's back, enough room for table. Yeah. In the yard. Yeah. In the whatever they call them, you know, the patio. The patio, yeah. But it's costing you eight hundred thousand pounds, and aren't you lucky? Yeah. The the attitude Whereas has really changed. Yes, it has changed. This is your land. The council are loaning. Because it's really now about packing as many people into as small a space as you can to make as much as it yeah. returns yeah. as you can. So we had we had all that Lots of space. on the outskirts of Cardiff. It was the city of Cardiff, but because you know they, they were building, so it was on the edge. It's probably not on the edge anymore. And and it was only as I got older I realised that we had loads of green space. I never thought of myself as live growing up in the country at mm. all. But we had we had the River Ely, which was this big, tiny little river. You know, you could hop, skip, and jump. You were on the other side of it. But we did have a river, and we'd be sent out. Um, you know, weekends and holidays, 
don't go in the river. <laughs> all right? And be back for your tea. With exactly that look on your yes. face. <laughs> and they know we... I know you've been in the river because the dog's wet. <laughs> <Do you know? laughs> yeah. Duh. I told you not to bring your dog. <laughs> Um, so we would just go off and disappear. So, so it sounds like even though you weren't with your necessarily biological parents, you enjoyed your childhood. I loved my childhood. And it was That's really so good to hear. Because it was weird. I loved it. It was a noisy, I mean, it was a violent house and they, they, they're both dead. So, you know, <laughs> it was a, it was a really fractious household. It was right. not, I went back to visit a neighbor last year. I just knocked on a door. She's in her 80s. I said, oh, Doreen, it's Olive's daughter. Oh, yes, we sat and my husband and kids came in. I said, do you remember him? Oh, she said, oh, Reiki, I was a bit afraid of your mother. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, with good reason, I imagine. He didn't mess with me. He didn't mess with, <laughs> really? Olive. He didn't mess with Olive. Olive was full set of false teeth, 40 <laughs> fags a day, slippers. Do you know what I mean? She was like effed and blind as she swore like a trooper. Really? Yeah, and if I had mates come in, I'd say, Mum, could you just you calm it down? <laughs> <laughs> could you just tone it down? Just, not that I don't love you as you are, know, but you know, know could I'm you swearing just? Swearing could you swear? <laughs> so and it was, yeah, there was there was there were fights and there were scraps and it was it was. So you had siblings? Well, th th so I have. They had a daughter, who was ten years older than me. So yes, um, who. <laughs> <laughs> she hated me. Let's face it. She might watch this, but it's true. <laughs> because I turned up when she was ten years old, and she'd had a bedroom to herself, and suddenly the baby was in. Who the hell is this cat in my house? Uh, excuse me. <laughs> so it was you know it was not it was not great for her, and uh, so so if you'd met me as a kid, I had an older sister. Right. In reality, I had a seven or eight half siblings on my father's side a half sister on my mother's side and a brother with whom i have a biological mother and father okay um but i didn't meet him until i was in my 20s and didn't meet any of them till much later so so yeah to you almost you were an only child with just one exactly. older sister so i was doing my thing i had this older sister that really didn't like me <laughs> and <laughs> And I can see you sleeping in the same room with one eye open. Yeah, it was it's like, a bit like that. I really don't trust her. Stuff again. <laughs> and I'd be like pouring her perfume down the toilet, and <laughs> filling bottles with water and stuff. You see, this is what it's about. It's <laughs> those wonderful little moments that realize that you know, because you see someone on TV, they're still human. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you know, really, they're still so human. human. So human. I mean, yeah, it was. I like the perfume down the toilet bit. I yeah, love that. I really did do that because because there's almost that point up. where being ten years older as well, you, you're then not even really sharing the same world, you know, because it's ten years yes. over. Yes, and she would be forced to look after me sometimes, you know, and take me with her on Saturdays, and I. I remember these Saturday morning discos. Every now and again, I'll hear a song and go, God, I dance that. to that. I remember that when I was seven and she was 17. I remember that song. And I have this huge sense memory of all her friends going, did you have to bring the kid again? <laughs> 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 yeah, are, you, are you still in touch with her now? No. Okay. <laughs> this is probably way too honest for this time <laughs> on, a, on a Thursday <laughs> afternoon. No, she still lives in, in Cardiff. She's still okay. there. I hope she's well and happy. But I think we stopped trying to be mates. Yeah. It was, no it point was pretending any further. Absolutely. Yeah, we were forced together. Yeah. Now we can... And now we can just live our lives. As and apart. And not have to pretend that we... When did you decide acting was for you? Oh, around that time. So, eight or nine. And one day I will use the internet to find out exactly. I saw... Hello Dolly on the television. It was Christmas. In my head, it was Christmas. Actually, Eve. you started off today singing a song from Hello Dolly, didn't yeah, you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, I love that. Yeah. And uh, I saw Barbara Streisand, and I walked up to the screen, and I thought, I want to do that. I want to be able to sing and dance in the street. And that age was okay. nine, eight, nine, nine years old. Okay. And as I say, I'm sure if I went through the TV schedules, yeah. I could find. The actual date. When was Hello yeah. Dolly on? Which Christmas was Hello Dolly on? Somewhere around 1978, 77, 79. Um, and, and I just, I want to do that. I want to do that. And then I, I took part in 
whatever school production I could get my hands on, anything that would have me, any right. that would have me. So you took that upon yourself to, to investigate it, chase it? Initially, it, was, it, it was school. And then when I got to first year secondary school, my drama teacher told my mum that it, an hour a week of drama wasn't enough for me. And she knew a youth theatre, so I went to Orbit Youth Theatre. So I would get, my mum would take me initially, and then I would get the bus into the centre of Cardiff. Right. And Orbit Youth Theatre was uh, a revelation. It was, they had a senior, they're still going, they're still you know a very, very a major concern in the world of amateur theatre i think in 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 wales cardiff and they had a youth theatre and i was the only kid coming from my side to cardiff when i first got there and so i knew i was aware of people who were going to the, the independent schools in cardiff and the schools i knew of as the posh schools right yeah and there were kids who were um they were going on holidays that I, I, was, I, I could only imagine. And only heard about, and yeah. some you hadn't even heard about. Yeah. And, then this, and, the, and there were a whole <coughs> bunch of, a couple of the kids had dads who were estate agents who would put money into the, into the company. Okay. So I was mesmerized by the fact that this girl's dad had boards all over Cardiff. I was like, oh, that's, that's her dad, that's his name, and that's her dad, that's his name. And and so they were famous for me. Their dads were famous because I didn't really know what a state, an, an estate agent was. I just knew they, <laughs> the names were everywhere. Right, right. And there were, there were families that were Jewish, and I'd never met Jewish people. And I, they, I loved, I wanted, to, I wanted to be, I wanted to know what they were talking about. I wanted to be a part of that. What, going to Israel, what did it mean to go to Israel? I, I knew Israel from the, from the Bible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they were going to Israel. They'd been to Israel. And they, they were talking about things I didn't, and... and um, festivals and things I didn't know anything about and I, I just would I probably stared at them a lot because I wanted to know and, <laughs> and I, wanted, thinking, what I, like, I want to be a part of this world and um but I also at that time became really I became embarrassed about who I was and where I was from and that was not good but it's yeah. it did happen I was very well it aware still gave you some kind of motivation to do and keep going and yeah. And improve. Really so is. this was with the encouragement and support of your parents. Yeah, my parents were absolutely fine with it. It was youth theatre, <coughs> you know, and they loved coming to, to see the shows, particularly my mum. And well, uh, that's great because, as we were saying earlier about the the support network, encouraging it does make a difference yes. as opposed to well, what kind of nonsense is that job? You know, which is quite oh, well, relevant in our prevalent in our community. Oh, absolutely. What kind of you need to go and learn a trade? You need to, especially uh, in well, that time. Bearing in mind at this point, I'm twelve, thirteen years old. So, right. So I know I want to do it for a living, but I don't think anyone thinks I actually will. So I it's, see. So it's not a problem. All right, all right. They think it's just taking it's up time rather than you running around exactly, idle. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when my my mum died when I was fourteen, so this is my Cardiff mum, and um, and I kept, and then I sort of started doing things by myself. So I I, I kept going to Orbit Theatre <coughs> and I joined South Glamorgan Youth Theatre, South Glamorgan Youth Choir. Um, I applied for the National Youth Theatre of Wales. I didn't mention that to my dad. It was a, a residential, four-week residential course, and I didn't tell him about it until I had the place. And then mm -hmm. I said, oh, I'll be spending four weeks of the summer just in the centre of Cardiff. So people were coming from all over Wales. I only had to go five miles. Right. And he said, what's that? And I said, oh, it's this, and South Glam Education are paying for it. So I was able to tell him all that yeah. at 16. And then I applied for drama school. I applied for four. Uh, two were in London, I think it was Lambda and Central. I came to London for those auditions, didn't tell my dad where I was, so as far as he knew I was in school. Right. Uh, had one in Bristol, didn't <coughs> tell him where I was. I, I just thought I'll tell him if I get a place he doesn't need to know. To know, know yeah. Uh, and auditioned for what is now Royal Welsh College of Music and Drama. It wasn't Royal when I went there. And, um, and they offered me a place and I didn't initially want to go because I wanted to leave the city, but then I, I knew. But you really I wanted to come to London. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I wasn't offered the London places. I was way too young. I was a young seventeen-year-old. I think yeah. I could see that. But I was offered this place at, at the local drama school and took it because I needed to get on with it. I needed to get on. And but you I see, again, going back to what we were saying earlier, that was the drive within you to keep going. Yes, I yeah. really needed to. I really, I, I thought if I stop. 
I, I might never Not start move again. On. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there wasn't a plan B. But I was struggling at school. I think I was still uh, grieving my mum. So I was really struggling at school. I was doing three A levels: English, French, and music. I dropped English at the end of the first year, and then. Uh, uh, the Christmas of my second year A levels, I was offered the place at drama school, and they said it's that you get the place and the grant regardless of your exams. And I said, sorry, just tell me that again, <laughs> <laughs> just so that I'm sure. <laughs> and they said you couldn't do it now, of course. It was a diploma, no. wasn't even a yeah. degree. Three year diploma, one hundred percent paid for by South Glamorgan Youth Theatre, and uh, and. I said, okay, I gave all my books to my best friend. I said, will you take these back to the school? Tell them I'm not coming back. So this is the Christmas before I'm due to sit exams. <laughs> I continued working in Little Woods. I had a Christmas job. It was the end of January, right? And my dad, who was himself grieving, who kind of looked up from his head in his hands and went, shouldn't you be back at school? <laughs> <laughs> and I went, oh, didn't I tell you? Uh, I'm not going back. And I think there was a row, which I think well, revolved around likely. him not being able to pay for any drama school. And I said, you don't need, I need to. to. Yeah. I checked and triple checked. <laughs> Just ready? for this moment. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just yes. for this moment. I don't need any exams. I don't need any grades. They're and, paying my And fees. I don't They're need your money. <laughs> I do not need your money, it's just as well, because the phone ain't working, because you haven't got any, so it's fine. It's okay. They can clearly see there's no money coming into this house, so they're paying for, for it. it. Yeah. And I went to, so I worked in Littlewoods right up until my first week of drama school. <laughs> and the rest is history. Yeah. First big job. Big job. Well, there were loads of little ones. Yeah. There were so uh, my very first job, Made in Wales Stage Company, uh, the wonderful Julie Adams gave me a job which got me my equity card. Six week job doing Branwen, an adaptation of one of the Welsh folk legends. Right. Singing songs like, through mountains and through valleys we wander far and near. <laughs> never heard that before. <laughs> and we're really hoping we never hear it again. <laughs> <Through> okay. <the laughs> We're Good. hearing it again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm right back there. Um, so that was my first job. And then I did, I did loads of work for the Sherman Theatre and um, worked at Theatre Cluid. Worked up at the Edinburgh Royal Lyceum. The first what you call big job. Yeah, because there's always that job when you actually think, yes, I've made well, it. No, to be fair, the, the moment somebody paid me to do the thing I'd wanted okay. to do since I was nine or ten, I felt I'd made it. All right. Seriously. So, so Maiden Wells giving me that job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was being, because I, I want to earn a living yeah. acting. I want to earn a living acting. I, I, that's what I want <coughs> to do. I want somebody to feel I'm So once paid. someone's paying you, yeah. you've, you've made it really. And you know, I know it's great to, to do all kinds of things for no money. I get it. We all have to do that just to stay creative. But I, I just wanted, I wanted that to be my job. Yeah. And, um, but then I got, I got, um, we on, thank you. Uh, I'll just finish. I got, uh, Great Moments in Aviation. Right. It was a film with Jonathan Price, John Hurt, Vanessa Redgrave, and Dorothy Tootin that was filmed at Pinewood, six weeks at Pinewood. It, it's a bizarre little film. Right. <laughs> it's a bizarre little, but at the time, it was amazing. And I had a dressing room between Jonathan and John Hurt, and I used to just stand there and just look at the names on the doors and go, wow, this is extraordinary. Wow. We didn't even get, we'd have to do this again. Oh, well, the, the we have to. We have to do this again. We have to...